someone uh, named it the Cornfield Bomber. And not, not being a bomber and not being in a cornfield, it's interesting that it was named that. I don't know who, who named it that, how it got that name. It should be the Wheatfield Fighter, but uh, I guess it sounds a little catchier, I guess, to be the Cornfield Bomber. <laughs> take off as a flight of four. We actually ended up as, as a flight of three because one airplane aborted. I had my wingman, which was uh, Major Jim Lowe at the time. The other member was uh, Tom Curtis. He was also a major. He was to be the opponent. Well, we flew uh, slightly north of Mouston. I was coming in at approximately 40,000 feet. As it turned out, my opponent was lower. We met. Uh, we got into a, into a vertical scissors at the time. And very shortly thereafter, uh, the aircraft uh, went into a post out stall gyration during a high-speed rudder roll and immediately went into a left-hand turn flat spin. It remained in that spin as I was going through the maneuvers, the emergency procedures to recover. It, uh, it did not recover. I finally, uh, after being prompted by my wingman, ejected approximately at 8,000 feet or so above the ground. Immediately after I ejected, the airplane immediately went completely nose down and recovered from the spin and flew off. Flew off a number of miles away and landed by itself in a little town by the name of Big Sandy. There was about six inches of snow on the ground. It was in a wheat field, probably skidded some couple hundred yards or more and uh, came to rest. It ran at idle until it basically ran out of gas. This was the first time that the minute the pilot ejected, the aircraft recovered from the spin. Of course, I was, I was surprised that that was the case. I assumed it crashed, but uh, the fact that it landed by itself was obviously a, a shock to everyone. There was no major structural damage. There was ma minor damage, and the airplane was sent back to a McClellan Air Force Base, which was our depot, and at some point in time, I'm not sure when, it had been repaired and was returned to service. And I believe it was probably in about 1979, which would have been nine years later, uh, the airplane uh, was down at Tyndall, and uh, my wingman, when I jumped out of it, uh, Major Lowe was the squadron commander, now at Griffiths. And he, of course, saw to it that uh, I was uh, assigned that airplane, and I did fly that airplane uh, when they were down there it was training with IWS again. Well, it's a, it's a unique experience, you know. I guess I'm part of a, of a one in a million occurrence. I don't know that this has ever happened again, uh, this whole scenario, but it is good to see the airplane again and to know that it's, that it's in the museum here, and this story, I guess, will uh, live on until it happens again. <laughs>